experiencing depression is one of the most awful things. It's very misunderstood in society. Even in previous years, you know, I tried to get help. People just think you should be able to snap out of it. It's not like that at all. Every day you have to summon the strength to get out of bed somehow and put on a smiley face and get on with life. wouldn't be here today if I hadn't painted the railway stations. I think it was the start of a journey that kept me going. It took me 104 of them, 10 years of therapy, if you like, on that journey, waiting and looking for those trains to come. I just thought that everybody was the same as me. I didn't really realise that I was an artist. I used to find myself sitting at the end of the garden quite frequently underneath this huge rose bush, which was like five metres in the air. And from several metres away, it would look like a giant pink mushroom. I first started painting pink mushrooms when I was 15. The pink mushrooms represented hope and the dark insects represented the bad part of my life. As a young adult, art led me to costume designing and I found my niche. Just happened to have a fancy dress party and was envious of all the lovely clothes that people brought with them. Um, I decided that very night that when I got up the next morning I was going to be a costume designer. The costume design business really snowballed right from the start. And then one day a gentleman came into the studio and asked me if I could supply some costumes for television and I got invited to go on to television myself. The producers of the show told me that they noticed that my voice was very croaky, so I went to see a doctor and I was told that eventually I would need surgery. I was told that my voice would come back after a month, but it didn't. The doctors didn't hold much hope that I'd ever speak again. And communicating with my children was impossible, not to be able to read a child a bedtime story or ask them how they're going at school or anything like that, and just writing little notes to my eldest daughter and um, I just just couldn't continue any longer. I just couldn't see, couldn't see any way forward. Yeah, so at that time I decided to have a breakdown, like you would. I'd been to Australia twice for a holiday and I had family that lived out here and I just figured that, you know, come to Australia at the age of, I think it was 33 or 34, which is very young really, um, to think that, you know, my life had gone as far as I was concerned. So Australia it was. There was a huge hole in my heart for my costumes, you know. And then to start again, you, I remember walking down the stairs at Brisbane Airport. I thought, where do I go from here? With no voice and two children, and I had no idea what direction my life would be in. None whatsoever. Don't know where I'd be today if I hadn't painted the railway station, you know, what direction I, I would have gone in. It was by accident that I started painting railway stations. Just happened to arrive at Gbung station one morning and there was a sign on the platform which said it was going to be demolished and replaced and I decided to paint it. After painting Gbung station I started painting more and more stations. Every station that I went to people would come over and share their stories with me. I couldn't talk back but I wrote down their story and took their name and number. Eventually, after about six years, I did get my voice back from a whisper to having a full conversation. So it was that time that I contacted everybody that I had met at the stations and interviewed them. With the help of Pauline Reckington and John Kerr, we turned the interviews and my paintings into a book. Those memories and stories are captured forever. The Railway series gave me the momentum to continue painting and achieve other things. This led me to do a mural for Pine River Shire Council. So I did an original oil painting initially for the design and then drew on the wall over 20,000 numbered sections in pencil. It took me about 19 weeks to draw on the wall and a thousand people in the community painted the picture. 
which was an extremely difficult feat to do, so much so that it actually turned out to be a world record, the Guinness World Record as the largest painting by numbers in the world. Just when things are going well and, and you know you think everything's all right, and then you're just faced with another setback, something else that you have to cope with. And about a year ago, I was diagnosed with multiple cirrhosis. Some days are good. This particular day today, I've been able to walk around. Some days I can't walk more than five metres. It's one of the worst, well, I don't know, losing your voice was bad, but I reckon MS would top it. The pain that you go through is shocking, like you get electric shocks that last for four hours a time, and then you try all the different drugs and things and they haven't worked. So when I go to bed tonight and I lay down, I'll start to be electrocuted. It's a bit like when a dentist hits your nerve when he's drilling your tooth and it goes down both legs and you lay in bed and you... that's MS. So I've looked to my art, you know, to give me strength to carry on. When I get up every morning, as I say to my partner, all I've got to do is get to the gallery. If I can get to the gallery and sit in my chair and paint, I will be right get there and paint and then everything comes good. When you paint you completely lose yourself. All your depression goes. I can forget about my pain. You're actually going into some form of meditation. It must be almost like a drug. The more you paint the happier you get. I've tried painting in black and white sometimes and it doesn't work the same as colour. Colour definitely has an impact on the brain that brings on the happiness. When you go in my gallery that's why it's so colourful. It's this happiness. People often come into my gallery and they take big deep breaths and they say, thank you, Janet, I've just come in here for five minutes to get my fix for the day. There again, it gives me purpose to get out of bed in the morning. Just because I've got MS, it's not gonna hold me back, you know. I'm a fighter. If there's a way of doing something, I'll find how to do it. And my goal for this year was to paint G-Bung Station and come hell or high water, I am going to. I'm going to incorporate the old and the new in the painting. And there's going to be an image of me with my wheelie walker that I have to use sometimes. I'm there in my younger days. My little pink mushrooms are hovering over the debunk faintly in the background. Pink represents hope and happiness of the future. I'm getting on with my life. So art has taken me on a journey through the highs and lows, and who knows where it will lead. And as long as I've got my art, there's a reason to continue. I look forward to every day to picking up that paintbrush and immersing myself in all those beautiful colours and, and that's my journey. Still got a long way to go yet. <laughs>